In the previous modules, we've seen what a powerful process evolution can be and how it works at many different levels. But evolution also has its limitations. In this module, we're going to look at some of those limitations and at what evolution cannot do. Here in the Paleontology Hall of Museum Naturalis in Leiden, the Netherlands, we see the petrified remains of animals that once walked and crawled the earth. Almost all of them are extinct now. But some of them were themselves ancestors of animals that survive until today. The species are gone, but the species that evolved from them are still here. And this is one of them. This is the fossil of Homo erectus, found in Java by Dutch physician Eugène Dubois in 1890. This early human was the ancestor of at least five different species of humans. These five species all look somewhat different, but the differences pale in comparison to the similarities. They're all apes on two legs, with large brains, small teeth, opposable thumbs, and able to make tools. These traits did not evolve in each of those five species independently, but they all inherited, uh, they all inherited them from their ancestor, Homo erectus. So evolution is limited in what it can do by the raw material that is handed down the generations. Another limitation for evolution are so-called trade-offs. You may remember this extinct giant deer from module one, where we talked about sexual selection. The so-called Irish elk, Megaloceros giganteus, is famous because it is a deer species with the largest male antlers ever, a whopping three and a half meters across and weighing up to 40 kilos. And like most deer, each year the antlers were thrown off and then regrown. The Irish elk evolved such large antlers because each increase in antler span helped a male to win the competition with rivals. But there's a trade-off. Carrying it around and regrowing it each year cost males a lot of energy. So presumably this is the maximum size deer antlers can grow to without becoming too much of a burden. So that is another barrier to evolution. One function of an organ can sometimes get in the way of another function of the same organ. And a third limit to evolution is what we could call evolutionary inertia. Some aspects of an organism's shape can be so hardwired that they are resistant to selection. These fossils come from the so-called Burgess Shale in Canada and they are more than half a billion years old. During that time, the world saw what we now call the Cambrian explosion. In a relatively short time, all kinds of body plants evolved, giving rise to the ancestors of almost all the major types of animal, mollusks, arthropods, velvet worms. It seems that at that time, it was still quite easy to evolve big changes in an animal's blueprint, probably because not so many genes were involved. Since then, more and more genes have been integrated in an animal's development and it has become almost impossible for selection to make drastic changes to an animal's blueprint without killing it. In this module, we will look at some of the limitations that evolution faces and how these limitations may determine where evolution can and cannot take us. <laughs>